Well, in a very similar way, this is how we at Arbinger unlock creativity in individuals and organizations. Through a very deliberate process that we've been using now for about 35 years in organizations around the world, we help people learn how to see. Because it turns out that learning how to see is at the very heart of any creative endeavor. And helping people learn how to see other people is how you unlock creativity among teams and organizations, how you mobilize people to achieve stunning creativity together. What does creativity free of ego, these images of ourselves, look like in real time? Well, I saw an example of this recently in a Netflix documentary series, one episode of which highlighted the work of the photographer Platon. In this series, you actually see him interfacing with his subjects, the subjects of his photography, in a very, very interesting way. Just take a look for a minute at how he shows up as a photographer when he sees other people as people. In this case, his subject is Colin Powell. Notice his posture. Notice where he is in relation to the subject he's photographing. He feels a need in this moment, seeing another person as a person, to be right there on the same level with them. And in this case, on the floor, looking up at his subject, both literally and figuratively. Now, this is not some technique. If you look at your life and you realize, you know what, over a lifetime of not seeing other people as people, maybe I've developed a certain way of seeing myself that's getting in the way of productivity. Maybe I come into meetings or show up on projects, seeing myself as worse than, questioning my own creativity, because I've had a lifetime of not really seeing other people as people. Or maybe you think, you know what? Generally, I see myself as better than others. So I'm threatened when other people have better ideas than I do. Well, if it's not a technique that you can just, some behavior you can just go mimic, then what is this? This is the natural response, the instinctive response of a human being that sees another person as a thou, a person with needs and challenges and objectives that are as real and legitimate as mine. No better than me, no worse than me. He's with, he's with somebody fairly powerful, fairly famous. It doesn't matter. He just wants to know the needs and challenges and objectives of this person so that he can capture that humanity. And it's remarkable how people then open up to him, how they then reveal their humanity so that he as a photographer can capture it. Now, it's not just with the rich and famous and powerful that he's like this. In a trip to Africa that's documented in the same uh, series, he goes to photograph this woman. This woman had been the subject of severe sexual violence. And he photographs her, he asks, with her child a child that was conceived in this awful moment. Now, I want you to watch very carefully the screen. Pay attention to Platon, what his physical posture reveals about the way he sees. Now, it's, again, it's not a behavior you can mimic, but you might get a clue about how he sees by how he is with this person. A person who likely has rarely been seen as a person with needs and challenges and objectives that are as real as others. Watch this. Watch him. Now, as you watch him, watch her. And watch the way she responds when she is seen as a person with needs and challenges and objectives and aspirations and goals and hopes that are as real as his. Watch his posture toward her and watch her respond. Watch her open up to him. Watch her begin to reveal her humanity. And then he's able to capture it. And who can deny the power of that? In this moment here, he's explaining to her through an interpreter that this photograph that he's about to capture will, for many other people just like her in similar situations, provide incredible strength. And who can deny the power of the photograph he's then able to capture? We are almost compelled to see this woman as a person with needs and hopes and challenges and goals and desires that are as legitimate as our own. 
being in the presence of a person who sees us like a person, who sees all of our needs and hopes and challenges for whom they are as real as their own are for them, it is almost irresistible. And it unlocks a way of being together that, that starts to generate remarkable levels of creativity. Now, there's a fiction out there, a view of creativity, that is something like this. There is some reservoir of productive energy that lies deep within us. And to become more creative, we have to go deeper and deeper to access that productive energy that lies somewhere inside of us. Now, maybe there's something true about that, but the problem with it is that if we believe it, we usually turn more and more and more inward to find it. When the truth is that stunning creativity comes when we become so involved and raptured with the reality of other people, their needs and challenges and desires. Every stunningly creative output that I've ever seen has come, has been born in a deep understanding of the needs and challenges of other people.